Okay. Hello and welcome. Um, I'd like to begin today's session by acknowledging the traditional custodians on, of the land on which we meet, um, recognising their continuing connection to land, waters and culture. Um, and I pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. My name is Sarah Gundlach and I'm a senior communications um, consultant for character and distinction, a communications agency for the ambitious. Um, and I'm joined today by my colleague, Lily Rayner, um, who will be very kindly helping facilitate the Q&A um, with us this afternoon, or this morning, sorry, getting ahead of myself. Um, so today we're here to talk about the power of storytelling for PR. Um, and ultimately what we're here to discuss is the role that storytelling can take um, in helping to build a brand. Um, and the way that brand and storytelling and connection all uh, work together um, for your business and to help you achieve growth outcomes, to scale, to connect with customers um, and to achieve your marketing goals. So for the session today, um, we'll start with um, talking a little bit about what is PR and understanding how it works and the role it can play for your business. Um, we'll then look at the power of storytelling um, and break it down a little bit to understand how it might be useful for you and your business. And we'll get into some tips and some frameworks that could help you to structure your thinking um, and really sort of act as a jumping off point for you. Um, and then after that, we'll have some Q&A. Um, and then, uh, yeah, let's, let's get into it. So... The point of today's session is really to understand the role that storytelling can take in your business. Um, now, what we see here is that brand and narrative can actually be a really competitive um, strategy or a competitive tool that can create monetary value and also social value, and that is the value of connection. So we understand that brands today have more resonance with their customers um, when they're actually able to build those connections, to build direct contact with their customer, to create shared meaning. Um, and what we learn through that is that today, audiences actually um, are really uh, attached to brands or um, looking out for brands that actually are willing to share a strong point of view and to um, you know, demonstrate that they have beliefs and to stand behind them and to really um, you know, put their values prominently out in the world um, via their actions, via their products, and ultimately via their communications. So, you know, we understand that, um, you know, falling in love, creating brand loyalty and building connections to brands actually can happen as a function of um, communication. So what does this mean for PR and, you know, what is PR today? Um, well, ultimately, we at Character and Distinction um, view strategic storytelling as a fundamental pillar for public relations, because what we're looking to do is actually build connections with our audiences. Um, and we understand that audiences actually are looking for that values alignment and for a strong point of view to be shared. So um, we find that storytelling and narrative are actually at the heart of PR and the, the, you know, at the heart of what we do day in and day out. We also find that public relations um, is about building really strong, meaningful relationships. So this is where, um, you know, building connections with a brand um, and, you know, with um, media, with uh, your internal stakeholders, with your customers, with your team, perhaps with government or um, brand partners. Um, relationships are also a fundamental tool that help you to build a brand, gain awareness um, and pursue growth objectives or, um, you know, pursue uh, stronger resonance in the mind of your customer or your key stakeholders. So for us, um, strategic communications and relationships are really the foundational cornerstones of the work that we do with our clients. So it's also important to understand what PR is not. And I'd like to do a little bit of scene setting here um, just to keep uh, at the back of our minds while we just go on to discuss storytelling and brand building. So um, to clarify some common misconceptions, public relations is not something that's a one-off. You know, we've said before that it's about building meaningful relationships and sort of ongoing connections. It's not something that you can set and forget. 
Unfortunately, PR is also not a magic bullet. Um, it won't solve your customer acquisition or um, challenges, or it won't um, help you to overcome you know, a bit of a, a crisis and an issue. It's not something that you can just turn on and off and solutions are there. Um, and then public relations today, or good public relations, is also not spam. It's not creating a press release and sending it out to everyone on a mass distribution list. Um, it requires a much more nuanced approach today. Public relations is also, and this is coming from an agency, not something that you need a very expensive agency to do. Um, what I'm hoping to share with you today is a series of ideas and frameworks and starting off points um, that will help you to understand um, what sits beneath good PR and to prepare so that when the opportunity arises for you to capture the moment, um, that you're ready and you have the tools and the um, background knowledge to be able to do that for yourself. Um, and finally, public relations is not about your ego. Now, it can be, you know, using media can be a very public facing um, activity. Um, it can be um, that an individual is often sort of the spokesperson or the public face of a brand or a business or a government agency. Um, but good public relations is not about your ego. It's not about you having your face out there and being known. Um, it requires a much more nuanced approach and it, it requires um, a lot um, sort of stronger understanding of what sits behind um, what you're trying to achieve. So to give you a little bit of context, again, about what does PR look like today? PR is much more than, as I said, the press release and the media story. So the PESO model here um, covers all the different types of media that are, or all the different types of activity that are involved in an integrated um, communications or marketing campaign. So it covers paid media, which is, you know, as you can see, anything where value money is exchanged for content. So that can be across social, that can be across um, sort of advertising campaigns. It's often focused on lead acquisition. Um, earned media is a lot more in line with the traditional understanding of PR that people have. So this is where, um, you know, you are attracting attention and coverage based on the, um, the value or the intrinsic um, newsworthiness or interest in what it is that you have to say. And this is very important and we'll touch on that more uh, in a moment. Um, there's also shared media and own media. And this is built through partnerships, through the relationship side of things. It's uh, capturing the maybe virality or general human interest to be shared by via third parties on social media. We see brands using this tactic a lot these days. Um, and there's also own media, which is again an essential um, communications avenue that brands and businesses and organisations and even individuals can use to build their profile and to gain awareness in a broader market. All of these um, activities need to work together today in modern um, PR and communications. Um, and what underpins each aspect of um, PR within the PESO model is actually, you know, when you boil it down, it comes back to communications and having something that's valuable to say, and, um, you know, really making sure that you've refined and um, optimised your narrative. What is it that you're communicating before you go out and amplify it via any of these channels? So really what we're seeing that PR today really relies on having a strong narrative and being able to communicate clearly with your audience. And what we want to do today is to discuss, you know, what um, makes it for a good narrative, what makes for great storytelling, um, and how can we prepare before we amplify. So it's about getting the phasing right. So for us at Character and Distinction, you know, this is very much how we operate and the way that we build out our day-to-day -day activities. Um, we see storytelling and relationships as being critical um, and at the centre of PR today. So PR is very much the story that you tell the world about your company. And as we saw from the PESO model a moment ago, it can also be that other people pick up on that story and they start to tell it for you. And that's where we see sort of broader reach and um, third party um, endorsement from other people talking about you. But ultimately, how can other people tell your story for you if you're not already putting out great communications, clear communications and consistent communications 
in the form of your narrative. So, you know, you've really got to strip it back and take it back to basics when thinking about um, using PR and storytelling to build your profile and grow your business. And you need to think about what stories are you telling about yourself, about your organisation, about your brand. Um, and a key aspect um, that we look at is really tapping into the why. And we'll, we'll cover that in a little bit more detail in a moment. But ultimately what we want to do is find those little nuggets of truth, those um, you know, really um, meaningful aspects of our story that will resonate with our audience because a, a key goal in great communication is making sure that you can tell the right story to the right audience at the right time. And you're not just sort of having a, a scattergun approach to content and saying, well, we have lots of stories, let's tell them all and see how they land. You know, um, startup founders are fantastic at iteration and at testing and measuring and refining and building. And that's very much a process that you can apply to communications as well um, and to your storytelling. And we definitely encourage that. Um, the other key part of PR for us is all about relationships. Um, so we're going to focus more on storytelling today, um, but it's important to understand that storytelling and relationships really do go hand in hand um, because we um, focus on building connections to people through our storytelling. We focus on finding shared value and tapping into that value and that values alignment between you um, and your audiences. Um, and you'll see that a key part of building relationships is also about um, finding opportunities to make people feel something, to engage both the rational and the emotional. Um, and, you know, communication and narrative and storytelling are really critical um, for building relationships as well. So the two go hand in hand, um, but today we're really excited to focus a little bit more on good storytelling. So um, let's for, take a moment to understand why does good storytelling matter? And now I've got Patagonia here just as a little example, um, because um, when it comes to creating a brand that people love, that has great loyalty beyond the, um, you know, the tactical or the physical product that they sell. Um, Patagonia is definitely one of the leaders in the category. Um, and we can see through Patagonia and other examples that brands have a really great power to build connections and to build a community and to create, create a deep love and to really resonate with their audiences. Um, and when they do that, it actually helps them to elevate above um, you know the physical or the practical um, into something stronger and this it's this ability to kind of connect over time and to find deeper meaning um, through narrative through storytelling but also through the activities and the actions that bring that storytelling and that narrative to life if we can do this repetitively over time um, you know this long-term connection translates into brand loyalty. And that's a really, um, you know, that's something that we as brand builders, as businesses aspire to create with our customers is an, an ongoing connection. You know, customers or other stakeholders, it's important, relationships are important. So what are the elements of good storytelling? Well, it starts um, with the ability to sort of identify why people care or how can we make them care? How can we be meaningful? Um, and so elements of good storytelling um, are definitely, um, you know, that it is something that can be memorable. Um, you want to, your ideal is to create um, a connection and to stay top of mind with people and to get them to think about you and to, um, you know, want to engage again and to maybe share the word and tell other people about you and about what it is that you're doing. Um, and now as we'll explore, you know, finding the why, why you, why this thing, why now, why should people care? Um, that's a critical part of being able to tell a good story is being able to sort of put yourself in their position um, and to bring out the most relevant pieces of information to them um, when the timing is right and in the right format. So again, it's about matching the content to the audience. You need to understand who you're talking to and the best way to communicate to them. Um, and again, um, good storytelling comes back to being able to use different levers and add different layers onto your story um, so that you can create a deeper connection overall. And ultimately, good storytelling for, for brands 
um, and for organizations, um, one of the ultimate goals of storytelling is to build trust, you know, to help build your credibility, to demonstrate that you're authentic, that you're um, someone that can be relied upon. Um, and, you know, uh, increasingly when we talk about storytelling for brands and for businesses, there's a lot of distrust in the environment at the moment. So what we're trying to do through storytelling is to humanize ourselves, humanize the business um, and bring it down to um, a person to person level. Because ultimately we understand today that individuals connect to other people. They don't connect to things or to products or to a concept. Um, it's much easier to build a connection on a human level. And so that again is another great um, aspect of storytelling is to find elements of humanity or values that people can see as being relevant to them and something that they want to connect themselves to. So why don't we illustrate with an example to um, you know, understand how this concept works and to really see some storytelling in practice. So full disclosure, UP are one of our clients um, and we're very proud to work with them. Um, and I'd love to tell you a little bit about them this morning. So UP are, um, you know, all about superpowered banking. So um, from their perspective, they believe that money today is complex and for many young Australians, um, you know, the environment in which they're living and operating on a day-to-day -day basis um, is quite challenging compared to the way, say, that previous generations related to money. So jobs are more casual and less permanent. And, you know, I think the, uh, the first eight months of 2020 are a fantastic example of just how complicated and challenging um, life can be, not just for young people, but for everyone. Um, and when things don't go to plan, um, you know, it can be really challenging to stay on top of your finances um, and to create good habits around how you earn and save your money. Um, and so for UP, their um, real reason for being is to help take people from a place where money is a cause of stress and anxiety and something beyond their control um, to a happier place where they feel actually empowered and in control of their finances and, um, you know, aware of what their money habits are, you know, not to, um, you know, restrict and to, um, you know, change the way that they live, but actually to amplify that and to make them, um, you know, feel more confident that they're in control of the way that they spend and save. So the way that they do that is they have a series of um, tools that effortlessly help young people build savings, automate their finances and really understand what charges are coming next and how they relate to their money um, in a way that's natural to how they want to live. Um, so that's a little bit of background on UpBank, um, but what I hope that it illustrates, and is, I'll show you some more examples in a moment, but what they really do is they consider every aspect of their communication, whether it's um, you know, product design, and on the screen you see an example of um, their card and the welcome pack that it comes in, whether it's you know, the in-app chat, whether it's their um, you know, customer email communications or it's events that they bring together, every single touch point for UP is focused on helping to um, you know, build this narrative and to build an environment that creates financially savvy, supported um, young Australians and helps them through better understanding and connection to their finances to really live their best life. So here are some examples um, from their email communications, which we've identified is an owned channel, um, but also a great opportunity to build communication, create trust with their audiences, um, and as I'll show you in a moment, can also actually lead to some earned media more broadly. So as you can possibly see from the communications on the screen, these are just you know, some little snippets of the way that UP communicate the language they use, um, they're really tapping into some of these great elements of storytelling in the fact that, you know, they're creating memorable communications. They're standing out from the crowd. These are not the kind of communications that, or the language or the, the style of the visuals, these are not the kind of communications that you would expect um, to see from, say, a big four or traditional bank. Um, they're clearly matching their content to their target audience. UpBank has a very um, 
Gen Z, sort of young millennial skewed focus, and we can see very appropriate use of language um, and visuals to help tell that narrative. Um, and we can also see a nice balance um, in a lot of UPS communications between the emotional and the rational. So they'll have sort of the stats and facts and figures that connect to the rational part of the brain. You know, these are the activities that you need to um, do to save money. Here's some financial tips for you. But on top of that, they also layer an emotive um, appeal that really connects to, um, you know, deeper to their consumer and helps them to sort of understand um, on a, a more intrinsic level um, why this activity is important and why this brand resonates for them. So we'll see sort of gamification in their app that is fun and addictive and taps, taps into a totally different level of um, comprehension and engagement um, than a bank might typically engage. And the, the combination of all of these activities is really that it helps to build trust between the audience and UpBank. And as you'll see here, um, the outcomes from that community building um, and trust is that they have great relationships with their customers, um, but also that it can lead to some earned media, which helps again to spread the word further and to identify um, these are the ways that this brand is doing something different. Um, and we can see very clearly through sort of some of these examples of earned media um, that it is building on this narrative of helping a new generation sort of understand their finances, improve their financial literacy, um, and really connect again with their money um, in a non-traditional and youth-focused way. So there are a couple, that's one example, um, and a bit of a, a sort of high level structure as to how you might, um, you know, start to begin why, to understand why communications and storytelling are important for building a brand, connecting with customers, creating trust, and then that is sort of a gateway to perhaps building your profile via earned media and via a bigger profile. Um, now, what we're going to look at now is how you can begin to leverage your story um, for PR, but also just to, you know, take a moment um, to think about what story is it that you're telling? Now, um, you know, I love to run these kind of workshops with startup founders because they're often starting with a very blank slate and um, it can be an opportunity to combine sort of the personal story with the business growth story. If you're um, from an organisation that is perhaps a little bit more established or, um, you know, ha has an existing narrative, this can also be a useful um, moment to sort of check in and see if there's ways that you can incrementally improve or um, just, you know, maybe reconsider and start to rejig um, and iterate on your existing story. So um, essentially your story and your narrative are the background work and the backbone to having a successful brand and building a brand that people love. Um, and why, why do we do this or how do we do this? We focus on our narrative, as I've said, um, to create a connection between person to person because we know that people don't really connect to products or physical items or not often. Um, or services. If, with services, it can be a little bit more tricky because they can be kind of intangible and there's, um, you know, often not physical evidence that something exists. So we need to find a way to connect um, on a different level um, and to resonate and create me shared meaning between ourselves and our key stakeholders. And one of the ways that we like to help brands to do this um, is to make reference to Simon Sinek's Golden Circle um, and the idea of starting with why. So I absolutely recommend that if you haven't seen the video and I've shared the link on the screen, um, that you have a look at the video and read Simon's um, you know, books and written materials. Um, he's an incredible thinker, um, but I will definitely give you the abridged version now um, and help you to sort of um, very quickly understand the approach that we use when we work with businesses. So essentially um, what Simon Sinek's Golden Circle tells us is the way that brands and individuals communicate currently um, is often almost in the reverse order. It's done the wrong way. So essentially um, he tells us that a lot of organisations know what they do really well. You know, this is the, the products we sell or the services that we offer. 
Um, and that's often where the storytelling starts and ends for a number of brands. Um, there'll be some organizations that might add a bit of nuance to their story by saying, well, actually, this is how we do that. And these are the traits that we have that help us to stand apart from our competitors. You know, maybe a little bit of differentiation starts to creep into the mix. It's the way that we deliver our service or it's the um, experience and knowledge of our managers or, you know, various details that help to differentiate. So this is sort of the common um, trajectory of the narrative that we see many businesses using. Um, ultimately, what Simon suggests is that we need to flip this narrative. Um, and the way that we flip that is by starting with why and connecting to um, the purpose or the root cause or belief for why we do what we do. Um, and this nugget, which can be challenging to unpack, um, is actually the foundation of our story and what will help us to tap into that connection, to tap into that human element, um, and to really elevate our story um, into a level that connects with people in a much stronger way. Um, and we can, you know, then once we have that why, then we can layer in those other attributes, um, the how and the what, to add clarity and detail to our narrative. So what Simon's suggesting is really kind of a, um, a paradigm shift and a flip in the way that we communicate, um, urging us to start with why and work from the inside out. And the reason why we do this, as Simon says, is that people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. Um, so that's, you know, they buy as in they will physically purchase or they will actually connect and use your services. But it also works at that other level of saying, well, they actually believe in and they invest in you and in your brand based on that purpose, that cause or that belief. So if we take an example um, uh, from another of our clients, Culture Amp, who are also presenting later today. Culture Amp, you know, if we were to take the traditional approach and to say, you know, what is Culture Amp? Culture Amp is um, some you know, an HR tool or it's a business software um, that helps organisations understand how their, perform how their employees are performing or engaged at work. So that is the traditional way of focusing on the what it is. It's a um, HR tool or a business software. If we flip that and use the Simon Sinek approach, what that allows us to do is actually um, really connect into some um, really interesting and meaningful underlying values that sit behind the business. So Culture Amp are actually on a mission to change and improve the world of work for 100 million people. Um, and the way that they're doing that is by effectively scaling great culture and making it available to organisations of all sizes. Um, and they're also um, working to create, you know, what we call culture first organisations. So this root purpose or cause or belief that sits behind the business, improving the world of work for 100 million people, that um, as a foundation for a narrative is much stronger. That as a um, message or a story that unifies a workforce, you know, the team of Culture Amp, that attracts partners, that is um, an emotional connection or a message and a tagline that can start to attract the right kind of people to your brand, that's a much stronger foundation um, and there's much more humanity in that level of storytelling than there is purely by saying it's a SaaS um, product or an HR tool. So here are some examples, again, from Culture Amp that help to show how having the why at the centre of your narrative and your story can then be put into action and translated um, not only into actions or into what we talk about as a business, um, but also into, you know, attracting attention, building profile, um, and, you know, more broadly talking about um, issues that matter. So we see here, um, you know, we've got um, Culture Amp thinking about changing the world of work um, and really putting humanity and culture first at the heart of what they do. Um, we see them talking about this publicly and helping businesses um, to put culture first, to think about diversity and inclusion, um, to um, talk about how important it is to be a B Corp and to take the steps to do that, um, to share tools actively. You know, that's 
walking the walk by talking about the issues that matter, but also talking the talk by making changes that help um, their employees, but also other employees and the broader public. And so we say, you know, sharing, sharing resources um, related to diversity and inclusion or sharing resources to help businesses navigate um, you know, the mass translate, transition to working from home as part of the coronavirus pandemic. We see these actions that play out um, that are all connected to this broader narrative and this real focus at the core of the business um, to really putting culture first um, and making the world of work better for more people. So how, how can we put this into practice for our own businesses and how can we begin to think or about our own why or discover it um, because it already exists. Like there's obviously reasons why you do what you do day in, day out. Um, and in addition to revisiting the materials from Simon Sinek to watching the videos and learning about the golden circle, um, we also have given you some prompts to maybe help you tap into your why and to build on that to think about ways that we might be able to use it in our storytelling. So essentially, you could start by thinking about the purpose, and that's what we've spoken about with CultureAmp. You know, they have this big vision and mission um, to make the working life better for a large number of people. What is it about the work that you do that initially drew you to that? If you're the founder of the business, your founder story and um, origin might be um, very closely linked to your why. If you work in an organisation or a government or a university, maybe there's aspects of what attracted you to that field um, that you can tap into to help you um, really connect into the foundation um, and building blocks as to what will become your storytelling in a moment. So you can think about your vision to change an industry. Um, you might be sort of, um, it might be a David and Goliath kind of thing where you are just, you know, one individual making incremental changes, um, which all build up to something extraordinary as part of a broader mission. Um, or it might be actually that your why isn't about you, it's actually about your customers. And this can be a great way, again, to demonstrate um, sort of some impact that you're making and, um, you know, you can, if it's the, the warm and fuzzies or it's, you know, the learning that you see or it's sort of um, underlying passions that help you connect to what you're doing. Um, you know, this is really at the heart of what we're talking about when, you, when we ask you to discover your why. Um, and rather than the rational, you know, the facts and the figures and the features, what we want to do when we start to reverse the um, order and use the inside out golden circle approach is to move away from the automatic response to storytelling, which is often, you know, focus on the what and deliver the facts and figures and features. Um, and to instead begin with building that emotional connection. You know, what are the feelings that um, you want to elicit or that, you know, are meaningful for you? Um, or what are the frustrations that you're solving for your customers? So once we have our why, and you know, that was very much a, um, a very speedy um, visit through the importance of why and how to get there. Um, but once we have our why, the next part is then building on that and working to integrate it into our storytelling, um, because it can be, as I said, a really powerful tool. Um, so we, we start with why and then we build on that and we want to give you some examples and some frameworks and some tips um, to give your story a little bit more structure um, in order to communicate clearly and again start to um, build a narrative that will connect to your audiences um, and help you to grow awareness or to achieve your marketing goals. Um, now, we'd love, love to note here that, um, you know, as we've said, PR is not a silver bullet and neither is this session. Um, we just designed it to give you some, um, you know, a useful framework or a starting off point. So let's get into it now. What are the key elements of a story? What makes a great story? Um, well, here are, some, here are some key pointers for you. So stories will open on a moment of truth. Um, they can make people feel and they engage the senses. Now, if we think again about the golden circle and that connecting with why, um, that's very much what we're trying to do here, you know, engage um, the left and the right parts of the brain. 
um, to make a stronger connection and to increase the chances of, um, you know, that we'll be remembered and people will connect with us in our storytelling. Um, another element of a good story is that we will reach back into the past to savour the contrast. So um, contrast is a really useful tool in terms of storytelling. It's the before and after. Um, and it's basically how you breathe life into your story um, and take people along for the ride. That's a really important part about storytelling for brands. Um, and, you know, it might be, again, that we're tapping into the customer discovery. You know, if you think about um, how was the customer um, before you existed? You know, what was their challenge? What was their frustration? Um, why was there no solution that really met their needs? And then in contrast, once you came on the scene, how did you facilitate that journey or how did you add value or offer an improved solution? That's one, that we, one way that we can kind of um, reach back into the past in order to um, demonstrate how things have changed by our involvement. Another element of a, um, of a strong story is one that actually leans into those moments of uncertainty and includes, you know, um, moments of vulnerability or doubt, particularly for startup founders. You know, there's a lot of strength in vulnerability um, and, you know, nobody expects that the, um, you know, the journey to success and to growth for a business is smooth. Um, so it can be really um, strong in terms of a storytelling um, structure to actually connect into that conflict and doubt. Um, and one of the reasons why it is so strong is that it, you know, it humanizes you. It helps people to understand that, um, you know, you're not just a, a business or an organization or some kind of entity. There's actually real people and real struggles and challenges that go on into um, trying to achieve what you're trying to achieve. So vulnerability and conflict are essential elements of a story. And again, if we think about a great story in terms of um, creating a brand narrative, um, your story should explain why you've made a difference. And again, if we're talking about how to sort of build on that um, starting with why um, and the impact, this is very much where there's opportunity to align those, you know, explain why you've made a difference, why you're doing what you're doing, um, sharing elements of your impact, purpose and reason for being um, will again um, build to a stronger story overall. So here are a couple of examples to illustrate. Um, the first one is from Warby Parker, um, an American company that are sort of direct to consumer glasses. I don't think I'm modeling them today. Um, but as you can see, you know, there's a bit of their background story that they like to tell there. Now, if you think about storytelling structures or models, this is very much an example of sort of the slice of life story. So we can see that it opens on a moment of truth that is relatable. You know, you're right there with them. You can feel the pain um, of being on that holiday and losing your only pair of glasses. You know, as a glasses wearer, particularly, I can feel that pain and really connect to this idea of, um, you know, the struggle and the frustration that you feel when you lose them. And then again, you think about being a student and with money being tight, we're really starting to paint a picture um, that allows people to connect and to feel those feelings of similarity and to put themselves um, in the shoes of the storyteller. Um, so that's one example. With the second example on the right hand side, um, we've got the incredible Australian company Four Pillars Gin. Um, and this is a really good example, I think, of savouring the contrast, you know, the before and after. Um, it's also, you know, anyone who's heard um, Stuart Greger, who's the comms lead from the Four Pillars team, anyone who's heard Stu tell the story of the Four Pillars journey um, can't help but be swept up by the passion and the pace and the excitement and the love that he feels for the brand, um, but, you know, for the process and the product and for his co-founders. So it's very much a story of, you know, humble beginnings. Um, you know, the Four Pillars team actually, you know, use the leftover grapes from their neighbor's vineyard to create their now award, multi-award winning Shiraz Gin. That's very much a story of humble beginnings made great. Um, but the elements that stand out from their storytelling is very much this idea of, you know, passion and love for the process, um, attention to detail, and you know, the ultimate care that goes into their product. And you really feel that when you um, see their communications, when you read 
um, you know, their newsletters to their subscribers um, and when you see the packaging. So again, all elements of the brand are connecting into this narrative that comes back to, you know, old fashioned love and care um, and, you know, a bit of the element of creation. There's a, there's a large focus on that as part of their narrative. So I mentioned with, um, with Stu from Four Pillars, his storytelling is really incredible because of the pace and the passion that come through when he talks about the brand. Um, another way that you can um, sort of think about how you might tell your own story and the um, is, is the structure. So we have here the three act structure, which comes from, um, say, you know, storytelling in films or in books. This is uh, quite common in those areas. Um, and what this does is help to give your storytelling a little bit more edge. So basically we understand that there's going to be a setup, a confrontation and a resolution. And we think through the ways that we might actually tell our own business story um, in this particular structure. So that can be a nice way to sort of set up and give a little bit more um, of a, um, an outline to the way that we approach telling our story. And here it's also important to remember the rule of three, which is that, you know, you should always know your beginning, middle and your end. Um, and it's important that your beginning is something that captures the imagination, grabs your audience in, um, but ultimately it's going to be your ending that makes you memorable. So think about the different elements of your storytelling and the structure. And also, you know, build, come back to that why and think about at what points Am I integrating my values and my reason for being and my passion? At what points along the journey when I tell my story, am I able to integrate that? So how can you evolve your storytelling? A couple of quick tips for you. Um, well, again, you know, think about what is your moment of truth? How can you take people on the journey of how you got here by savoring the contrast, telling them the moments of doubt that you faced, um, you know, being vulnerable and being human? What are you trying to achieve, achieve or what is your business trying to achieve? Tap back, back into that why um, and then think on a personal level, you know, what's my role in this mission? How am I making changes and impacts and helping my stakeholders, um, my customers, um, my community? Um, what's my role in this mission and how am I helping to progress that? You know, how can my personal experience help to, um, you know, build that cause and achieve that um, desired outcome? And again, some useful prompts for where you might like to start your storytelling. You know, we believe in our purpose is to, I'm really passionate about this. Um, when people use us or work with us, I want them to feel. So you'll note all of these are just prompts to help keep you thinking about starting with why, um, and also keep you thinking about um, connecting on an emotional level, exposing your humanity, um, and building that person to person connection, because again, um, when it comes to PR, it's all about great storytelling and building relationships and relationships are built between people. So the final part that we're going to cover today, um, which is around, you know, unlocking storytelling for PR purposes, um, comes to the moment in time when you have your story together, you've laid the groundwork, um, you know, you've really refined and created a narrative that's ready to be shared. Um, so, the, you know, the unfortunate reality of media today um, for brands and for individuals is that it's actually a really crowded environment and there's limited bandwidth for journalists um, to tell your story. So what we need to do is to create a story that is worth telling, um, but also to have it in the right format and environment and to know when it's going to be most relevant so we can capture that moment when it occurs. So ultimately, having a great story, building a great narrative, refining it and delivering it consistently is all the groundwork that we need to do so that when the moment does strike for PR, we're able to capture that and make most use of it. So here are some pointers, how to know when you're newsworthy. Unfortunately, we're not always newsworthy. <clears throat> Excuse me. So here are a couple of moments in time that are common to um, businesses to startups um, to sort of growing organization or scaling organizations um, that we'd like to run through just as kind of a heads up for when you might be able to share your story. So these moments in time 
you know, include if you've raised money. Now for startups, this is sort of a common moment that you might be media worthy. Um, but increasingly, you know, um, we're in a growing environment where the amount of money that you need to raise in order to be sort of um, considered newsworthy by startup journalists means that that number is getting higher and higher. Um, so it's not always the case. Um, it might depend on the publication or on the amount that you've raised. But fear not, there are other opportunities. You might have hired a big name or secured a well-known investor. Um, and these are other ways that you can kind of, um, you know, leverage that recognition that we have in the, or, um, amongst your audience to tell your story. So again, if we think about um, elements of good communication, matching the information to the audience is critical. And if, the, if your audience who's reading um, you know, the publications or watching um, the news or listening to the podcast or radio broadcasts, if they're already familiar with a big name or an investor, um, then that's going to kind of smooth the way for you to enter into the conversation and to let them know how you connect into the bigger picture, which is important for media. Another way you can be newsworthy um, is through unique data or a really clear view on a topic or subject. Um, these are common ways that we work with brands to um, create news moments, to help share their story. Um, and the reason why these two approaches are so great for being newsworthy and creating news opportunities is actually that they connect into a broader narrative. And, you know, it might be something that more people are interested in or that they're already talking about. Um, and that's a really important step to being newsworthy as a brand. Now, some other opportunities, you know, if you secure a big name customer or partner with a, a well-known brand, um, this might be an opportunity for you to secure media as well, um, because, you know, we can see again that there's opportunity to kind of leverage or borrow awareness from the partner or customer brand um, to then help tell your story, the story of the new partner or the emerging organisation um, or the well-known, you know, existing organisation that's actually taking a new approach and doing something new and different. So there are other opportunities and ways that you can kind of leverage um, existing brands that are now in your network. A unique founder story or entering a new market, disrupting a market, creating a new way of doing things. These are also common stories that we see in the media. Now, I'll give you some examples to help illustrate that again. So we can see these are all quite recent headlines from a range of publications. Um, we can see here that, you know, um, fundraising, um, you know, ex-employees of Atlassian, that's where we're sort of trading on the recognition of a well-known brand name. Um, we can see some data coming through in a headline there. Um, open banking remains closed for most. That's a thought leadership taking a controversial stance on a topic that's currently being um, discussed in the media. Um, we can also see sort of with the smart company example, um, a startup accelerator, participation in a well-known program, um, you know, university program, educational program, um, government supported program. These are all ways that we can tap into a narrative that's ongoing in the media and borrow rec recognition from sort of a combined um, approach or collective PR opportunity. You'll see with the last example from Mamma Mia, you know, this is a classic um, uh, case of the founder story being quite unique, um, sharing your personal journey and your um, very much, this is tapping into your motivating why, your reason for being um, as something that's kind of a slice of life, very interesting story to tell. So some final notes on being newsworthy. Um, before we open up to questions, you know, it's really about understanding who your audience is and why they should care. And when we talk about the media, it's actually the audience of the publication, not your own audience that we're needing to connect with. Um, so how can you tell something that's new or different, reveal or add um, deeper meaning to an existing conversation? That's what it's about um, and what journalists are trying to understand. Um, they'll also be looking to understand, you know, when, when it comes to talking about brand partnerships or well-known investors, or new customers that are well known. Um, that's um, seeking to th think about how your partnership or activities are actually going to impact a large group of people or maybe disrupt an industry and change it. And um, you know, what are the ways that you are progressing what is done currently? So when it comes to being newsworthy, it's all about you know, being topical, demonstrating your value, demonstrating your impact. Um, and again, 
um, having a point of view and being willing to say something. Um, now, what our point of view is and what we're willing to say, if we think about the storytelling arc that we've been building, it very much comes back to that why and you know what are the values that we stand for, what is the narrative that we as a business are telling and therefore how can this piece of communications, this media opportunity begin, uh, you know, continue to build on that narrative that we tell. So a reminder that, you know, media opportunities might not be an everyday thing. PR is not an on off or a silver bullet. Um, but what we do know about PR from that PESO model is that there are lots of opportunities to tell our story and to communicate and to tell a strong narrative and that each of these opportunities is valuable in building our profile, in creating connections with our audience and building trust. And, you know, trust is an essential element for brand success. So um, telling our story, whether it's via earned media through a publication, whether it's through our own channels, through our socials, or whether it's actually through our words and our day-to-day -day conversations, um, you know, it's important to remember that we represent our brand at all times and that we are all storytellers. And the words that we deliver have power and meaning. Um, and if we're looking to build our brand to, um, you know, scale our business, to grow awareness, to connect with more customers, um, you know, it's important that we start with a clear understanding of who we are and what it is that we're trying to communicate. And that's why storytelling and really tapping into the why and the reason for being um, is such a strong position from which to start. So ultimately, you know, some reminders, start with why, revisit why it is that you're doing what you're doing and try to flip the way that you communicate and communicate from the inside out. Start with your values and then layer on your differentiation and then as sort of a value add, talk about, okay, well, how is it that we actually do that? What is the product or the service that we deliver? Think about the structure that you use in your storytelling, you know, have a beginning, middle and an end engage the emotions, um, you know, think about the way that stories are built, that movies are created and think about your business narrative almost as a plot that you can um, play with and sort of manipulate in order to build stronger connections. And when you do have media opportunities, think about how um, you can add to a conversation, how you can create newsworthy moments um, and be memorable. And one of the best ways that you can do that is by saying something real. And saying something real comes back to demonstrating who you are and what it is that you stand for and what you're trying to achieve. So we then come full circle back to, you know, starting with why and why we're here and our purpose in our business. So, thanks, Lil, we're back on the line. That's it for the um, formal part of the presentation. And we do have some time um, quickly now for a bit of Q&A. Um, Lil, what have we got in terms of questions? So we've had um, a good question come through from Nisha that I want to start with. Mm -hmm. um, she wanted to ask, as an early stage business, should I consider hiring a PR expert, paid and or freelancing, if I myself have difficulty in articulating my story to my target audience? Mm. That's a great question. We, we often get that question and, um, you know, it, it, it very much depends who you ask and it's um, very much an individual journey. So I, I won't promise that it's a, a blanket answer, um, but essentially, um, yeah, it's kind of a chicken and egg. Whether you engage a PR agency or a communication specialist is quite different. So um, you might actually start by talking to someone who can help you articulate your company narrative, you know, can help you work through the process that we've just discussed today um, and, uh, and get your story straight. Um, that's quite a separate set of activities to then engaging a PR agency that might actually help you to amplify that story. So it's really about making sure that you have the sequencing of getting the, the structure and the narrative and the, the copywriting and the brand messages um, sorted, that's probably phase one. And then phase two might be the amplification and building out to a bigger audience. Now, um, you know, we advocate that there's a lot that can be done by startups. And one of the things that we understand about startups, obviously, is that time and resources can be very limited. So we hand on heart say that there's a lot that can, you can do yourself. 
Um, you know, we've hopefully given you some tools to think about it today, but also one of the greatest resources that you have is sort of talking to your team, listening to your customers and doing that groundwork yourself, you know, testing out messages with um, trusted customers, with loyal customers, with your team um, and workshopping those together. There's a lot that you can do um, without having to outlay a lot of money um, to pay someone to do that. Now, of course, if you, th if you think that that's outside of your skill set, we absolutely also advocate for, um, you know, bringing in some outsider skills. Um, but the important thing is to be clear on what you want to do. Do you want to um, refine your messages and work to um, set up your narrative? Definitely, you need to do that before you then go out and sort of seek to broadcast that and amplify your voice and your messaging. Yeah, great. Um, I've got another question from Mike. He says, how long should your story be? Is there a specific length that you should aim for? Ooh, good question. So Mike, that one comes back to making sure that the communications that we have um, is targeted to the audience, the time and the platform that we're delivering it. So um, when we work with founders, we kind of build up a bit of a toolkit that they have. So ultimately in your toolkit, you'll have the long form narrative maybe that you deliver in person. And that um, is very different. And the style and the content of that narrative is very different to say, um, your brand messages or taglines that you might be able to use in paid social ads versus um, how do you represent your brand and tell your story in a physical event or at a conference if you're delivering. So there's lots of different um, aspects to telling your story. Ultimately, um, the length and the delivery depends on the format and which audience you're telling them to. Because again, um, the parts of your story and the um, aspects that you emphasize or sort of de-escalate depend on where your customer is in their life cycle and the funnel as well. So if they're a repeat customer or, um, you know, part of your close community, they'll have a lot more sophisticated understanding of your brand and you'll therefore be able to tell them different parts of your story to say your first contact with um, a, a new lead. So it very much is um, a toolkit rather than a single story that you're building towards. But the consistent element and the core element that cuts across all of them, um, we like to think really comes back to that core values and you know what it is that you are there to achieve. Yeah, awesome. Now I think we've just got time for one last quick one. Uh, I've got a question from Jack. He said, is a patent or an invention considered newsworthy? Ooh, I think it ultimately it depends on what it is you're painted, patenting or inventing, Jack. So I think um, it's less about um, the product. So again, let's think about the golden circle. It's less about the what um, and more about the why and the how. How can you humanize or connect to a bigger audience or demonstrate the purpose and impact of the patent or the invention? You know, um, if we were to talk more about that and tease out that for, say, a media opportunity, I would be asking you questions about, you know, what's the impact? How many people is this going to affect? How drastically will it change um, the lives of these people? Um, you know, what's the, what's the value of it? So, um, yes, it's an opportunity and it's probably in the um, maybe or probably category rather than the probably not category for newsworthiness. But that was a great question. Um, so thank you everyone for joining us. I really appreciate it. I wanted to say thank you also to Launch Vic and for um, the DIF, the festival that's on today. There's lots of other great workshops that are running. Make sure you check them out. Um, the slides from this presentation will be uploaded to the Launch Vic YouTube. Um, I'm sure you'll receive further details of those. Otherwise, if you've got any further questions, my contact details are there for you. Please feel free to reach out um, and have a wonderful day. Thank you so much. <laughs>